Hello and greetings and welcome to the broadcast. I am here with Dr. Naomi. Naomi, I always say it wrong, so say it for me. No, it's like say no, Noemi. Noemi, Dr. Noemi. I spent some time with her at a conference and called her Dr. Naomi the whole time because I know a Dr. Naomi in Nashville that is a gynecologist. And I'm like, no, it's Noemi. <laughs> I don't want to butcher that, but Dr. Noemi Oliver, she is an amazing woman of God. Her and her husband are pastors at a church in Texas, and I am honored to have her on the broadcast today. Uh, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Maggie, and thank you for having me. Yes, you know, it's just exciting when you reached out and said, hey, I'd love to have you. I was like, oh, Maggie, I love how welcoming and how just encouraging you are. Just being in your presence, you could feel that loving person that you are, and you make anyone that comes in your vicinity, just so welcome. And so thank you for having me today. Oh, well, it's an honor. It really is. You know, your husband, I've seen him on TV for years. Her husband is, is Gary Oliver, and a lot of you may know him or may not know him, but they are both uh, just to seeing y'all in action, you know, because people are like, oh, that's Gary Oliver's wife. And I'm going, Oh, hello, duh. And, you know, Oliver, Oliver, that makes sense, you know. But I had the opportunity. I glanced over at a table. Uh, I believe it was when you were speaking. And your son and your daughter in love and your husband was there. And it was just it's such a beautiful representation of how a family structure within the body of Christ functions. It was it, you could sense how supportive they were being there with you. Uh, and she was speaking at the Christian Women in Media Conference. And and I'll tell you what, I walked away with not only uh, a couple keys, I walked away with a whole keychain of all kinds of nuggets because she brought so much information. And thank goodness she shared the, the you know, the screens with us because it was so much that it's, I'm still digging through it, a lot of information, but you do, you speak on a regular basis and you have a lot of things going on. I want to start off talking a little bit about, because I was so impressed whenever you were telling me about the storehouse, when God spoke to you and your husband and uh, how that happened and how he just breathed on that thing. So I want to update on that. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's just amazing. We're just humbled in this season to be used uh, by the way God is wanting to lead and wanting us to listen to him. You know, we, my husband and I, he's had a church for 23 years now, which is celebrated 23 year anniversary. And right in the middle anniversary, we're, we're doing this uh, event to celebrate the anniversary. And we just ended up coordinating a gala. And in the process of the gala, and um, the thankfulness of how, you know, it's a milestone to be at 23 years and just so thankfulness. You know, one of the days I woke up and I told uh, my husband, I said, um, the Lord is saying for us to open a storehouse. He said he did. I said, yeah. And I said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I saw uh, stacks of rice. I saw shelves. I saw uh, I could even see the logo. And I was telling him, I said, he's saying for us to prepare. I said, at first I didn't understand because I was like, well, what are you showing me? As I'm seeing the stacks of rice, and he said, "It's we need you need to prepare and have something ready for the community for what's coming." And so I woke up, and he says, "You know, I've been wanting to do a storehouse too." So I said, "Well, what did the logo look like?" I told him, "I said I could see the staff of Joseph. What one of the prophecies we had received is about he is the the staff of Judah, and I'm the staff of Joseph. Both of us coming together." And I said, "I could see the Joseph, you know, the Joseph's name on there." And so the next day he wakes up and he's like, he also, you know, he says, you know, the Lord said to call it manna. And I said, oh, manna, Joseph Storehouse. Yes. <laughs> I was like, we were just super excited. We started praying about it. And within the week, I get an email from, I had submitted an application at the food bank and I got the person that uh, is really the liaison in our area. And she says, hey, when would you have some time for me to take a look at your facility? And, you know, I know when God listens to you, obedience is about urgency and listening to what he's saying. That is one thing that I have learned when he's asking you to do something, you do it, you know, in obedience immediately. Just like when Abraham, when God spoke to him, he immediately got up. So immediately he's taking action, not just saying, OK, he spoke to me and let me think about it. Let me discuss it with so many people. Hold on. Let me see their input. No, it's about you just taking obedience at its word and taking action because it's about him guiding you in the path of how it's going to do it. He wants you to do it, 
not to wait until you have the whole plan set in front of you before you take a step forward. So I said, I texted, I emailed her back and I said, um, how about this week? So she came the day before we're decorating. I said, please, you know, disregard the church. Let's, let me show you the building where we're thinking of having. And we had this youth building that um, was not completely utilized when right after uh, COVID, we brought in a lot of the kids, you know, especially with all the shootings that were happening. We brought a, a, the kids in-house so that they weren't separated in another building and we had security in the house. And so that building was used only once a month. So I showed her the building and she says, yeah, I can see this is a big building. And I was telling her, it was funny because I was saying, I said, the shelves are going to go over there. We're going to have a corporate wall. And, you know, I was telling her the same thing that I was in the vision. And she said, okay. I said, well, give me, get, get some shelves and a fridge and I'll come and visit you in about a week and we'll go from there. So within a week, she came in, we bought some shelves. Uh, we moved one of the fridges that was in the church that was not being utilized. We got another one donated. And before within a week and a half, the storehouse was approved. And within, once we made the announcement, my husband made the announcement at the church, we had people popping and saying, hey, I've got some fridges I want to donate. Hey, I've got, I can do this. Hey, I can do that. We were running in less than three weeks. We opened that storehouse approval in less than two weeks. We had at the Christian Women in Media, when we were there for the, for their, you know, regular meeting. I get calls from HTV since, hey, we want to, we hear you're opening up a storehouse. We want to partner up with you. HTV is one of the biggest retailer, you know, food stores in Texas. And wow. we, the first week of getting approved, we got our first store. The second week, we got our second. Right now, we're sitting with five stores in addition to the food bank that has partnered up with us. And we're just looking at everything happening. We're like, only God, when he opens the door the floodgates come open, you know, and it's since then we have served up to 15,000 individuals. We've only been open oh. six months, and it just continues. <laughs> it continues. We have a saying saying, you can't make this up. You know, it's God. <laughs> we can't make this up. <laughs> just getting the approval that quick. Cause you're talking about, you know, like the board, the health department or the board of health, or were you talking about like that? They had to come in and inspect it. Yeah, the food bank has to take a look at the building, take a look at, does it have everything that it requires? Then from there, they go and give it to um, whoever they're in charge of and say, hey, I recommend this church to have a food bank. They have their 501C. They have, not only that, I was in the meantime, I wasn't even waiting for the approval because I know what God had already said. I was already taking training. I was already doing some uh, certifications. And by the time she said, okay, well, you know, we're going to recommend them. However, you need to have this. Said, it's already done. Let me send you the certificate. And so she was just in shock. She's like, by the time she came and brought me the signs and she says, I want you to know, I, I, I am over the, I'm the lays on over 226 pantries. You are the only one that has opened up in this short period of time that, um, we're even in shock, but we see the vision. I don't know how we see the vision, but we see the same vision that uh, that you guys have for this pantry. And uh, she says, we're going to put you. This is the other thing, too. So um, their CEO came to look at it after two months later because he's like, I want to know where all these numbers are coming from because this is not normal. Uh, we were told that you were going to do about 250 families a month. <laughs> a month. We're averaging about 3,000 individuals a month and so he says i gotta see it i, I just gotta I, you know everybody we were uh, exemplary food pantry we were you know on their newsletter spotlight there's all these things that are just happening and you know we're just still in shock so he comes in and he says you know normally it takes about not only the financial um savings for you to open a food pantry it takes about 20 to thirty thousand to start one um you also it takes about six to nine months just to get everything put together, inspection, this, that happened. He says, I don't think I've ever seen a food pantry open up in less than two weeks. <laughs> and I said, because I said, and you know what? One thing we're not, we're never going to shy away from or being careful and being sensitive how you speak about God. I said, because you don't know our God. I said, when God tells us to do something, I said, he just opens the door. And even him shouted, he's like, amen. I was like, oh, all right, we got a Christian brother here. <laughs> It was beautiful. There was no one 
really blown away. I'm blown away because yeah. you were right in the birthing stages of that, right whenever I met you. And I yeah. thought, God is so all over this because <laughs> you, it's, it's the heart of God. Provision right. is the heart of God. He right. wants his people to have their needs met and he's using y'all to do it. And that's so amazing. So wow. how long has it been open again? I, I heard you say it, but I wasn't sure. Uh, we, we've all, officially, we're opening three times a week. So we have 60 days of operation. We opened November 11th of 2023. And so we're literally going into four months, almost five months already of, of uh, being open. And we're uh, hitting over 15,000 individuals that we've assisted, you know, and like I tell the, when people come in and we've got a lot of members from the church that come and support and we've got people from the community that comes and helps. And like I tell them, I said, you know, when when people come in to the storehouse, I said, we have an opportunity to pray over them. I said, they may not know it, but you just ask God. We pray before we start. You ask God. I said, Lord, I know they're coming into the you call them here. Talk to me. Tell me, how is it? Can I pray for this person? What is going on in their life that when they come in, as they come in, they come out differently. While they think they're here for the, the need of the food, immediate need, there's something bigger that you draw them into that they probably wouldn't have put, you know, their foot in a, in a church. But because of the need, they're coming here that there's something bigger. And, and my let this be a temporary thing because you're doing some blessings in their lives and there's just going to pour out of here because you're wanting to touch them in a different way that they wouldn't have been touched by going to, a, you know, uh, the, the regular way of coming into a church where people went in to be prayed over. I said, so we all have that in the back of our mind. And so we're con constantly and, you know, many times we don't even have to ask them, do you need prayer? They come to us. Mm -hmm. They come to us. Why? Because God's already working in them. That now yeah, we're being yeah. used as vessels to be the, the ones to be able to pray over them and 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 maybe even talk about whatever they're going through. That that they know that they're not alone. That we're here. They're not. They're here to be loved on, respected, to be appreciated. And you know what? One of the things that also is very different from our pantry is that when they will come in. They get to choose what they want. It's called a choice pantry. So they walk around town like a grocery store. They go through the shelves and they pick as they need. That way they take whatever they're able, based on their dietary, you know, um, preferences, what they want to eat. And the five partnerships gives us vegetables, fruits, things that normally wouldn't get on, you know, a lot of the uh, dry, you know, foods from the food pantry. We get it from the other stores in addition to meat and just... The variety. So it's beautiful to see in, in the bigger scale what God is doing and what he continues to do. Not only through that, but we also have a clothing pantry that we open up. And the stuff that we get, I mean, we're getting T-shirts, we're getting uh, football dummies that we normally wouldn't. We have touched every school in our area because we got those football dummies. They're like the ones for them to train on. That oh. we had 60 coaches come into through, through the church, through the pantry, to pick up those dummies and shirts that now... The shirts that they have, they have color shirts with our logo on it because they're just beyond themselves understanding how could you guys give all this stuff out? So it's not us. The Lord put it in our hands. We didn't know what we we're going to do with all those palettes of T-shirts three months before. Three months before. And now we know that when the dummies came, the T-shirts came, now we knew there was a need. But God knew how to reach to those that were in need to come to the storehouse to pick up the items that were in so desperately need of. Those are the things that you can't make, like, again, you can't make this up. <laughs> it's all so God. Powerful, so powerful. Tell people where this is at, because I told them in Texas, but I didn't tell yes. them where. It's at. Yes. So we cover 13 counties. We are located in Benbrook, Texas. We are literally borderline between Fort Worth and Benbrook. So many people know in Texas, Dallas, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth. We are, um, Five minutes away from downtown Fort Worth, but we're in a in a in an area where literally borderline between Fort Worth, Benbrook, but we have all these other surrounding counties like Granbury, Weatherford. Uh, just that's why we have the the lady the lady at the food pantry, the liaison. She said, "You're in such an area where you cover so much territory, and yet there's no one there to cover." So that's why I, I you know yes, the Lord has really put us in a map to be able to make a big difference um, within the area and to be used in such a way that they're not only going to know us by the food pantry, but also the things that God is doing in the community. Mm, that's beautiful. 
Absolutely yeah. beautiful. You know, you and I were talking about before we went live, we were talking specifically about people coming into the church and being in a place. I mean, they may be coming for food or clothing or something like that, but people are hungry for Jesus That's and right. the power of prayer. And I love the fact that they are coming ready. And, and we were talking a little bit about how that looks for the new believer, the person coming in that doesn't know anything about Jesus and is coming in contact with the church who is transparent and and solid. I know because I've watched y'all online and stuff and I know that you teach a solid word and it's not a churchy church. It's not a um, uh, you have to, you get to kind of thing and, and yeah. the love that flows through there. So how are you ministering to those coming in when in the area of discipleship? Right. You know, we, that's, that's one of the things that God has uh, put a mandate on us, not only to feed them, to take care of them, those that are in need, if you're able to do it, you know, he says for you to, this is one of his mandates, but also to disciple. In other words, show them who Jesus is. So it's several ways through the example by you being there with them, being present, listening to them. Also, the other ways, you know, many times they don't even know what their their need is in prayer. And but oh, when right. you ask, yeah, when you ask the Lord, He will tell you, and you will know how how to pray for them. Um, there's times that they come in and they just they they don't even ask you for anything, but you're praying as you're walking with them, as you're talking to them, as you're uh, you know uh, as you're walking in through the aisles, you're just having the conversation, that relationship. That many times before they leave, they ask you, would you pray for me? Because they know who, who we are. They know what we stand for. And so we're coming out their prayer many times before they even, I'll give you an example. We had four gentlemen that came in and they said, um, we just came, we just got here. And, and we're like, uh, you mean like to the storehouse? No, no, no. We literally just got here to this country. Oh, oh wow. well, where are you from? You know? And they said, oh, well, we're, we're from Guatemala. It took us. 66 months to walk all the way from Guatemala. I said, we have parents here. I said, we're, we're fleeing. We're, I guess they, they receive a Salem, you know, when they get here. And he says, and what we have walked through and what we have witnessed, no men should ever witness, especially being with their family. And now your heart is breaking for them. Cause like, what did they see? These are strong men that, you know, young men that, what is it that was so bad that they're still traumatized? And, you know, when people are traumatized, they're still numb. That numbness is still there. You know, right. that's when you realize that th there's something bigger happened that it was too much for any any person to have witnessed in, in a way that so was tra traumatic that whether they saw killings. And we've heard some of the stories, too. They saw they heard killings, people being, um, you know, taken for ransom, people taken for their organs. I mean, all these things that you hear. So, yeah, you're there listening. And you know what? They said, but we're just thankful because we have food. <laughs> oh, your heart just breaks for them, right? right? So I said, okay, so let's, you know what? Let's. This is the process. we got to go through this. And then, you know, we started talking. And so I said, okay, they're excited, you know, uh, they're getting their cart, you know, here comes a volunteer. Oh, they don't have any groceries. Okay, we'll be able to load them up and we've got clothes too. And I said, you know what, before they go, I said, gentlemen, I said, if you don't mind, I said, let's pray with you real quick. Oh my gosh, they came together. And oh, I said, Lord, Lord, just release them of anything that they witnessed. And no matter what it was that was so tragic, that now they know that you, had, you have covered them. Mm. And brought them to a, such a safe place that their families and themselves are in a great place for them to be protected by you and that they get to know you. Oh, man, these men are just crying out. It's like it goes to show the trauma that they they just they, they, they saw that they never imagined would ever come a day that they would witness something like that. And, you know, for other people, they have their opinions. They have this. All I know, what God has called us to do is the humanitarian side of to love one another as he has loved us. Wow. And that includes whether it's fits feeding, praying for them, being there, listening to them, whatever that looks like. You know, all I know is that God will put the strength, the, the gifts in you and what you're able to exemplify and to be able to show how he can use you in such a way to love mm -hmm. on others. Because 
we need more of those voices. We talked about that. We need more women. They can, you know, such as time as this to speak the gospel, to talk about different ways that they normally wouldn't do it at a church setting. They would come into a different way, whether it's a podcast, a show, or just, you know, watching it on Facebook. God knows our needs. And, and when we're open, he'll be able to open that door for us to listen to whatever need that we may be in. Wow. That's so wonderful. and So beautiful. And what a blessing to your community. I just, I, you know, I, and your obedience, you know, the Bible says that obedience is better than a sacrifice. And so, I mean, we have to say yes and, and delayed disobedience is still disobedience. So if you're watching this and if God has called you to do something, maybe it's not to the magnitude of what he's asked them to do, whatever he's asking you to do, please take heed to what he's saying because he knows what he's doing and he's trying to reach others through your hands and feet. So thank you for your yes. Wow, that is so powerful. You know, you mentioned something important, and I want to talk about this as well. Broadcasting, podcasting, getting the words out. You and your husband have a broadcast. Uh, so if you're watching this and you're like, well, I'm not in their area and I can't watch your church, you can stream it online. But they also get together and do a broadcast. So tell us a little bit about what they would find on The Secret Place. Yes, um, The Secret Place is one of our podcasts. You can watch it on YouTube. You can li listen to it on podcast or on Spotify. And this is my, my husband, Gary Oliver, Bishop Gary Oliver, has a, a theology background. He's got his doctorate in theology, very grounded on the word. Uh, revelation, it's just every time, even when we're talking, we're like, whoa, that's really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and I bring the, the other side of the psychology, you know, the, many times we read a scripture and then, well, how does that apply to us nowadays? You know, what does that mean with what I'm going through? And so I bring in the psychology. So we bring those two together to be able to find a way to understand it. Why do we do the things that we do? I've gone through this before. Why is it, you know, we talk about uh, going around the mountain, you know, I don't want to wait 40 years to go over the mountain. I'm too old for this already. But, you know, why do we do it? And it's because, you know, it's our, our human um, uh, default is that many times if we're not aware of the things that we do, we don't know how to be able to better find a better pathway to to lead to to know that that one's not working. Many times we go through something so difficult that breaks us down to a point that why is it that I end up doing this over and over and over again? We ask that, but then we don't we don't look and well, how can I change? Well, number one is being aware of it. Being aware of it. You can't see, you can't acknowledge, you know, you, you can't fix what you don't acknowledge. So if we don't acknowledge it, we're not aware of it, then you know, then yes, we're gonna continue to repeat it. And so I we bring in both of us together. He brings in the word and you know, the scripture or the foundation of it, because really everything is in the Bible. If we're looking for it, right? The Bible becomes alive. And so when we go through something difficult, that's when it's like, okay, I can't do this again. This is when our heart is finally open and says, you know what? I'm tired of doing this my way. I am just tired of going around the mountain for, you know, constantly. Lord, just this is where David says, renewing me, you know, renewing me, my heart, you know, creating me a renewed heart, a, a new mind, a new way of thinking, a new way of seeing things. And so this is where we say, it's okay. You're not alone. We've gone through this too. But this is when we say, you know what? The Lord is trying to work with you. Lean into it. Be vulnerable. Be in surrender. Because we know our ways are not his ways. Our ways are the ones that's got us to this point. Because somewhere along, and yet he has the grace to bring us back into alignment. Okay. I know you went that way. Let's recalibrate. Let's bring you back. And, and when he does that, it's the best way, but we can't, he can't work in us when we're in a place of, I'm going to keep doing it my way. You know, we call it the ego, right? We're, we're, we think we can do better because I've gone through this before and I know now this time I learned better. No, it is when he gets to work in us that he's taken us back to our origin. And it's not about repairing ourselves, but about healing in a moment of healing. Now, when we come into a moment of healing, now we're able to see things differently. So that's what we bring at The Secret Place. So join us. It's online, on Facebook. It's on YouTube. And uh, we, we do it uh, once a week on a Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. 
but I'm going to go and subscribe to that because I did not know about that. And I'm going to check it out because I'm very passionate about that as well as the spirit, soul and body, the way that we were created. And a lot of times we take the word of God as the spiritual aspect, but we don't apply it in the other areas. And when we take the full counsel of the Lord and apply it to the whole being, things shift and things change. So thank you for doing that. That's awesome. You have a new broadcast that you're doing as well with another friend, another sister in Christ. Tell us a little bit about that now people can tune in yes this is uh, strictly for women it's called for women uh, at ibtv network and that's with uh, my sister karen smetley she's from arizona you know one of the things that we said there's such a need just to talk about just day-to-day -day things that women go through we wear so many hats how do we handle this you know even you and i were talking about this there's things that we go through that if we were all to be vulnerable and say you know what i don't even know at this point I can't even talk to my friends because, you know, on the facade, on the outside, everything has to be perfect. But when are we vulnerable and say, you know what? I'm hurting. This is not right. Like this is, I, I, this happened. This, you know, when are we vulnerable enough to say, you know what? I need help. And I need help, not from a place of, yes, I know I can go into prayer. Yes, I know I can ask the father, but I, my, it's my sister in Christ. Have you, is this something it, like, is this normal? Like, does this normally happen? And it's not until you're vulnerable enough. And then somebody says, you know what? I'm vulnerable too. I can tell you about a situation that I walked through similar to yours. Not comparing, right? Because there's a thing about comparison. You know, my pain is better than your pain. <laughs> but no, it's about the empathy of saying, I have been in, in a similar situation. And this is how I overcame it. But that tells you that they're holding your hand and saying, you know what? You're not alone. Yes. We go through struggles. There is no perfect way to find it. We get you know, this is where I leaned on more to the Lord in prayer, find understanding. But here I am in a human touch to say, I understand what you're going through because I've gone through something similar. Amen. And that helps you just to have someone to hear you. And so yeah. we talked about those things, and those are the things that we're having at IBTV Faith Network. Uh, we are going to be doing that broadcast and we're going to have several women, you know, talk about day-to-day uh, -day things that we go over, that we go through. Uh, women that are may have never been probably to church or, you know, they're just coming new into church, just new life in Christ. who have just given their lives to, to the Lord or who are looking and saying, hey, I know I've heard something about Christian people. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is that? The, the, do I, does it mean I have to look a certain way? I have to wear a certain, you know. No, it's about uh, just you being you, being loved the way you are, the way you were created to be, because you are wonderfully and, you know, fearfully and wonderfully made. No, you're not there to be put in a box. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, we're almost out of time, but I do want to point out that if you are in the Fort Worth, Dallas area, there's an event coming up, uh, Mega Women. And I, I love Dr. Marina. Uh, she is so super precious. And so tell us about that event. And that's what, June the 1st or May 31st? Yes. When May, is it? Yeah. It's, so it's Friday, Saturday, May 31st to June 1st. And, okay. uh, you know, we're excited to work with her. She, she's just wonderful. I mean, you hear her and there's just so much wisdom. Uh, she simplifies it. She walks it. She speaks it. And uh, she's bringing in several speakers. Uh, I will be there talking about finances. Really, that's my background uh, on how to have be prepared for uh, your finances. You know, how is it to how do you structure it? Do you do you talk about it? Some of the stuff is taboo. You didn't talk about it when you were younger. So many times it's trial and, you know, error kind of thing. But what if somebody was to help you? You and give you a step-by-step -step on what to do and, and ask questions. So we're excited. It's going to be several things. It's going to be finances and about branding, marketing. So it's going to be a great conference. If you are in the area, we invite you to come out and uh, be part of it because it's going to be some great nuggets that are going to be shared. Yes. And I'll, I'll share that as well, the link to that on social media. So, okay. So we're out of time, but I want you to quickly tell the audience, if you could leave the audience with the key, what would that key be? I would say the Lord loves you. Mm -hmm. You're not a mistake. You are created by design. Mm -hmm. And because you're created by design, you're created in his image. So don't let anyone tell you anything different. That is of the enemy who's here to kill and destroy. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. And you are, you are loved. And he knows you by name. I mean, if he knows you by name, that means you're in his radar. So understand that in this season is for you to grasp to what your gifts are and to know that you are loved. 
That's powerful. Thank you so much for being here. I just love your heart and all that you and, and your precious husband are doing, your family there, uh, internationally and locally both. Uh, listen, y'all, we know you can do a lot of things with your time. We appreciate you being here with us. Make sure you go and check out the the things that we have shared with you, the podcast, the events, things like that. You can watch them online uh, at their church. Tell them the church website real quick. Sure. It's Encounter Church FW for Fort Worth. Dot org. So it's EncounterChurchFW.org. I love it. I love it. But make sure that you subscribe to The Secret Place. And also, I'll share whenever another episode comes out uh, with the sister stuff, because we cannot have enough voices of women sounding together, linking arms, saying we can do this. And it's and it's OK to not be OK, but you just can't stay there. So find some sisters to help pull you out of that area and so that you can walk victorious. We thank you for being here. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. No Emmy. <laughs> God bless you guys. See you next time.